All right, we're getting into the data section of Axim. And that means we need to have access to a database to connect to because uh, it would kind of not be worthwhile to just store all of our data in memory uh, and then pretend that we're using a database. And while that might work for um, maybe like planning out or, or figuring out the architecture for an app, uh, when we're actually learning, we want to really connect to a database and, and make sure that we know how to do that. An actual database is required. Now I have one set up for us in Docker. Um, and so if you don't already have access to a database on your own system, um, uh, then uh, I would highly recommend using this one. Now you do need Docker and Docker Compose installed in order to use this database. And this is the same one that we used in the introduction to you application. So if you're actually, um, if you're coming from that course, you probably already know all of this to set this up. But uh, let's go ahead and review this anyways. So the only service in here that we really care about is database. Uh, and we can see that it's gonna use the latest version of Postgres. Uh, it's going to set ourselves up with uh, the password keyorb cat because I misspelled keyboard cat. Um, but I can't change it now because a bunch of people probably already have this sort of set up in their, their, uh, their scripts. And it's also going to, uh, use this init.sql file, which we can see under here, database init.sql, which is going to set up the database with two tables, a users and a task table, and then also insert data into there. We're gonna insert a deleted user and also a deleted task and two, well, default tasks that will be used for, for our users later. Uh, for the next several lessons, um, we're not gonna be creating the full to-do app, but we are going to be using this as examples of reading and writing to the database so that you can later create a to-do app. All right, let's, um, let's jump into actually running this. So notice that this is a Docker dash compose. This is created uh, with an earlier version of Docker compose and not the absolute most recent. So you have to use Docker dash compose as the command. Otherwise this won't really work the way that you expect it to. Also notice that I'm in lessons data. You don't need to be in the root project where the Docker compose file is. You can be anywhere as long as there's no other Docker compose between you and well, the Docker compose here. So what's the command we're gonna run? It's gonna be docker dash compose. Now I am on a Mac here. This is also gonna work on, um, on Linux and it should work on Windows as long as, again, you have Docker and Docker compose installed. Uh, docker compose up and, uh, and that's it. Uh, it's going to show everything sort of spinning up. And what we're looking for here is the two create tables and the three inserts. That lets us know that everything worked, well, exactly as we expected. Now, if I want to connect it and actually look inside the database itself, I don't want to control C this uh, because that will stop our database. I'm gonna to come to another terminal window and I'm gonna do a docker compose uh, exec and this is gonna allow me to execute a command interactively with, um, well, with a container. And so I want to now select the name of the service. So if we go back to our Docker Compose file here, we can see the name of the service is database. So I want to run a command on database and I wanna run bin bash that's gonna allow me to get an interactive shell inside of this container. So now I can just do whatever I want. If I wanna just type LS, we're kind of sort of not in our computer anymore. We're, we're now inside the container. Now this is Postgres, so I can connect into the database using PSQL. Uh, the username is Postgres for this. Um, the password, well, I'm as root, so this should, this should figure it out. I wanna to connect to the database Postgres. Um, the database is gonna be the, uh, in Postgres databases are almost always created with the same name as the user, uh, unless it was overridden. We did not overwrite that. So it is Postgres, Postgres. 
So if I just do this, it drops me into PSQL inside of Docker now, and I can now take a look at the uh, at the list of um, uh, tables. So which I believe is DL. Uh, sorry, DT. There it goes. DT. So that would be backslash DT, and that gives me a list of uh, tables that we've created. So we can see tasks and users. And now I can just use normal SQL commands to inspect these. So we can do select star from tasks. Don't forget the semicolon that is important here. If you miss that, it'll drop you into another uh, another um, line here, uh, expecting you to be continuing the previous statement. Uh, let me show you exactly what that looks like. Because when I was teaching uh, previously, um, a lot of students run into this and it would be very confusing. So if I do select star from task, forget the semicolon. Notice here, the only difference that will let you sort of see that you're in the middle of a statement is this dash here as opposed to an equal sign. Uh, if I hit semicolon now, it continues, the it finishes the statement and runs. So if you ever see that or things just start, stop working normally, try hitting semicolon or do a control C to exit the statement. All right, we can see that these are the three tasks that were inserted in uh, by default. Now, if at any time uh, your database gets corrupted or you accidentally delete everything from the database or you just want to reset to what we had previously, there is a way to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of uh, Postgres here, and I'm gonna come back to our uh, Docker Compose. I'm gonna control C to quit this. Um, and then we're going to stop it, So I'm gonna, or a down it essentially. So Docker Compose down. This removes the, uh, removes the database containers, um, but what it doesn't remove is the volume where the initialized database lives. Because that lives in between bringing it up and down, up and down. That way it's faster sort of bringing up every single time. But if you ever want to reset the database, you have to remove the, uh, the volume itself. So notice that the name of this is full stack to do Rust course, you know, database one. Uh, we're probably looking at for just something like this. And then we're gonna go find the volume. So we're gonna do docker volume uh, ls. And that lists all the volumes that we have. And here we have full stack to do, uh, to do rust course db data. And that actually corresponds with this db data to the var lib postgresql data. This is where the database is stored. Uh, we can now delete this volume. So docker volume remove that. Uh, and then um, now if I bring this back up again, it's going to rerun the init script. And so we're gonna use docker compose. Now let's say you don't want to have your um, your screen just taken over by you know the text of um, launching Docker Compose, and you just want you want to get your terminal back. Uh, we can do a Docker Compose and up a dash D for daemon mode. So now it's going to run in the background. When I do that, I like to use a dash wait, which is going to wait for this health check to run. Uh, which is basically just going to make sure that PSQL can actually run and work as expected. So we're going to run this and it's going to show me, okay, it's created the network. It's created the volume for us and it's spinning up um, Postgres and now it's healthy. This could take a significantly longer amount of time if you have a large amount of data to insert into the database. But now that it's in a healthy state, we're dropped out here. Now, what if something is just wrong? It, like something's not working. You come to the Discord, you ask for help. I might ask you to give me logs. 
uh, to sort of see into this. Uh, we can check what the logs are with a docker compose. Um, I think it's logs and then the name of the service. So in this case, database. And here we can see, oh, okay, everything is good. It, here's the create table statements. Uh, it stopped the server, but then it started to back up again and it's serving a port 5432 and it's up and ready to accept connections. If there was an error, somewhere in here, there would be an error message saying, hey, you, you know, the, in, the insert into the database was wrong and it crashed. And so therefore we can't really continue on or something else. So that, uh, that is our crash course for uh, setting up our uh, Docker containers so that now we have access to, um, we have access to a Postgres database. And in our future lessons, we'll be able to now connect to that database and run stuff on it. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.